Hi, welcome to Sylvie's Technique Vlog. Um, I'm going to be talking about the Karahat block. <laughs> we call it the Karahat block because Karahat is the one who I've been watching do it, and uh, it's pretty incredible when he does it. And he's actually corrected me into it a couple of times, so it is something that he consciously um, is aware of rather than something that I've just kind of picked up from him. Um, but basically, with your rear block, you'll see a lot of kind of like coming out to get as much of a block outward as you can. Um, the way Karahat does it is very economical in that it kind of comes forward at the same time. So instead of blocking out like this, you're actually blocking more kind of straight forward. You still want to bring your knee all the way up into your elbow so that you have this full protection all the way down. And you have to open your hip ever so slightly so that you're not like collapsing in. But you're not look, now I'm blocking and there's not a lot you can do off of that. It's basically a block on your way in, like as you're coming in. So it's the same concept of the golden kick where you're not breaking your frame, you're not kicking out like this, you're kicking up and over. So instead of blocking out, you're blocking in your frame to come forward. Um, what's interesting about this particular block is that because you're not breaking your frame, because you're not like coming out wide, if you look at, if you look at as you're coming in and you're gonna block that kick and then come in, there's not a lot I can do off of that because it's coming outside. That's a good block. That's not a, a wrong block. This is not a correction off of that block. This is another way to think about your block, which is using it as protection as you're coming in. So if you wanna kinda like not break pace, as you're coming after someone, if you're like a darn fighter and you're coming in, if I'm coming in and I know you're gonna kick me on my way and I just kinda can flash that block up like this, not only can you not super see it in the same way I go like this, but it doesn't interrupt the stuff that I'm coming in and you can actually throw more off of it. So these are super minor, <laughs> minor differences. Yes, you can throw something off of a, a block that's coming out this way, but the economy of movement when you don't break your frame, it's the same thing of like, you can hit someone like this, but if you don't break your frame, it's so much faster, harder, and more difficult to see. Same concept, right? So if you're on your way in, or you're like having your pissing contest, <laughs> like who's gonna move first? The difference in how fast that can be versus if you're trying to like, I'm blocking, now I'm kicking, see how like, it's like shaving seconds off of what you're doing. But for me, what feels good about that block or why when Karahat corrects me into it, why I'm like, yes, I know what you're talking about, is that you think differently about your block. There's a little bit more of a fuck you feeling <laughs> in this like I'm still coming in kind of thing rather than like I'm blocking, I'm coming in, is it's just like I'm not stopping and this can come up at any second, and my block, which is defense, can become offense really quickly. So I can like just put this up and it's gonna affect you, right? So if you didn't see the block coming up, but now I'm blocked and now it can turn into something else, um, it manipulates your opponent's choices in what their body's gonna be doing or what options they think they have as you're closing that distance. Um, Karahat in particular, his name actually means like a fortress, which is really, really appropriate for how he seems really impenetrable in the way that he fights. His blocks come up crazy fast. Like he checks kicks so fast and doesn't lose um, distance when he does that. My personal problem is I can actually check kicks really well, but I lose space when I do it because I'll check the kick and then I'll kind of fall backwards because I'm thinking about it wrong and because I'm breaking my frame. So I don't have a lot to do off of that block. So if instead I'm like not breaking my frame and it just comes up, see how I can just keep, keep flowing in? Um, it's different like, you're not like conceptually thinking about it in a different way, but it effectively changes your mentality as you're coming forward being defended at the same time. So when I'm messing with this, I do it in shadow boxing. 
um, just as I'm moving around to integrate it into everything that I'm doing. But I also try to train it as like a timing. So I'll use the bag for like timing, right? So um, a lot of times when I'm, for years, when I've been working on get the block and kick off of it, I basically choose like, okay, they would probably kick me now, block that kick and counter them. But it's not like, um, it's basically choosing, choosing to defend myself and then train the trigger to kick back. Whereas on this not breaking the frame one, it can come up as a threat even. It's not necessarily a block even. It's just like, oh, could've got you, <laughs> like, oh, could've gone kind of thing. Um, faking with a block is not something that even really makes sense. But I also block in things like this that confuses the hell out of my opponents. So the block itself makes them like, what is that? So going like this, while it's guarding me, is making my opponent go, what is that? In the same way that doing this could be a kick, it could be a teep, and it can actually become those things too. Which when you come out like this, you can't turn it into something else. So, for years, lock, kick to train the trigger. And now, I'm working more on using it as like, part of everything, right? So it's like, it's timing, but it's also just kind of general rhythm. So it doesn't have to become anything, and it doesn't have to be what it claims to be. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be a block. It can actually become a teep or a kick off of it. So all different ways of faking. <laughs>